What is up ladies and gentlemen? It feels like it has been way too long since I've been able to sit down and make a video for you guys. So today we are going to be reviewing a piece of tech that I found that I just stumbled upon and I love it and I wanted to share it with you guys. It's the Tourbox console for Photoshop, Lightroom, Final Cut, Premiere Pro. This thing is definitely going to help your workflow and we're going to review it today. Keep in mind this is not a paid review or anything crazy like that because I'm not that popular. Companies don't pay me to review their products. <laughs> Let's get into it. But first, we're gonna send it back to past Daniel to unbox this baby for you guys. Past Daniel? Thanks, present day Dan. Let's unbox this bad boy for you guys. Now, first things first, it's got some good weight to it. I haven't opened it, but feels good. We'll skip in because obviously you didn't buy this online to get the box. You want the contents inside. So let's open her up here. Boom. First things on top, obviously user manual, quick start guide. Everybody ignores these, but you know, if you want, they're there. And then inside the box, you got two smaller boxes. It's really nicely packaged. Everything like is embossed with their logo and stuff. This I'm assuming is the actual unit. So we're gonna open this second. And we've got a little box on the side here, which has the cables, the USB-C to USB. One thing that's actually really nice, I just figured this out. The cable is like uh, braided nylon, I guess. And it's not like those regular like Apple cables that you have them for like three months and it just breaks on you because it's poorly made. This feels like pretty good quality. And now the piece de resistance. Here it is. One thing I noticed right away, it has like such a good weight to it. It's so nice and the best part about it is I'm always nervous about ordering something online or getting something online and it just feels like cheap plastic. That's like the worst. You spend money on it, you want something that's built well and has like a nice feel to it, good quality. So you can see all the buttons and knobs on this bad boy. It feels really nice in the hand, like just twisting the dials and pressing the buttons. They have like a good click to it. It's really well built, packaging is awesome, and now all that's left is to actually use it and test it out and show you guys the functionality of it. Back to you, present day Daniel. Yeah, 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 no, thank you for that very compelling unboxing past Daniel. Now that we've unboxed the product, you see what it looks like, let's get into the nitty gritty, how she works. I think we should start by talking about the actual physical product itself, how it feels when you use it. Like I know we talked about it, when you unbox it, what it did first thoughts, but how it feels when you're using it. Since past Daniel opened it up, I've had a few weeks to work with it and get comfortable with using it. And I gotta tell you, feels very good in the hand for a couple of reasons. However they painted this thing or coated it, whatever it is, it's got like a nice matte finish. So your hand doesn't like slide around and you're not like losing your place. And even if you're working for long hours, you don't really get like sweaty. You know that like sweaty palm feeling? It doesn't really happen unless you have really sweaty palms. But anyway, the product actually feels really good to hold and to work with even over extended periods of time. The underside's got rubber grips, which is just like a small thing you don't really think about, but when you're working away, you might get really into it and you start flailing around for some reason. This thing's gonna stay put on your desk. It always stays stationary regardless of how much movement you're doing with your hands, which is nice. And speaking of hands, I don't have very big hands, which is kind of nice for the product because it fits in my hand really well and everything is very accessible, it's very comfortable to use so I can imagine if your hands were even a little bit bigger than mine or a little smaller than mine you would still be able to very comfortably use all the buttons. It's all very accessible, you're not like reaching across or even moving your palm for that matter. It's all nice and tight, very well organized, well laid out even for small hands like mine. And while we're talking about the size of the product itself, I really like that it's all usable with one hand and you don't even have to move your hand. Comparable or competitor products products are basically the size of a keyboard and what I think about when I when I see that is why would I want a keyboard sized object when I already have a keyboard if you can 
Use all the hotkeys on your keyboard. What do you need another keyboard size object for? Imagine traveling with that, bringing an extra keyboard along if you, you know, you might not have space in your camera bag, you might not have space in your laptop bag. So the fact that this thing is like maybe three inches by four inches is amazing for traveling with it as well. Plugs in via USB to USB-C cord, but the cool thing about it is on the back of the actual unit, it has an additional USB port because it takes up one. So the tour box people were nice and said, hey, let's make sure they can still use that USB slot. I only have one issue with it though. And this I think is a personal issue. It's not so much the hardware, it's something that I like. So again, I could see it going either way. It's not really an issue, but the main dial in the middle for me personally is a little bit loose. Now when you use it in the actual Photoshop or program of choice, it makes sense that it's as loose as it is, but just for my personal preference, I kind of like a little bit more of a, some more friction on that knob, but tiny little thing, doesn't affect your workflow at all, just something that I noticed, because it's an honest review, and again, they're not paying me to say this, so I can say whatever I want. Now that we talked about like the physical, actual unit itself, I think we should just dive into what this bad boy can do. Before you get started with it, obviously you're gonna have to download any driver for your computer and the Tourbox console. Now, I know a lot of people don't really like downloading additional software, but let me tell you, the Tourbox console is clutch in so many ways and it's definitely worth the download. Now, Tourbox console is not only super useful because it gives you an overview of what all the buttons do in case you forget what you're doing, but it also allows you to completely customize the unit. You can program different button combinations to cater to whatever you use most frequently, which is unreal. It comes with awesome default settings, which I use because I just found that it's the most uh, complete form. Like I didn't really have to make any changes to it from what I normally use, the tools I use in Photoshop or Premiere and all that. Pretty well set off the bat. But if you have specific buttons that you use all the time, like, I don't know, maybe you use the magic wand tool 65 times a day. You can program a button to do the magic wand tool. So program it however you like, but I'm saying the default layout is actually pretty good on its own. And speaking of layout, why don't I give you guys the actual bird's eye view of what the layout is like and just how powerful this tool can be for you. All right, so Tourbox has actually separated their unit into three separate sections. You've got your rotating section, which includes the dials and knobs and scroll wheels. You've got your kit section, which is the directional pad, and it basically those are the program tools that you're gonna use. And you've got what's called the Prime 4 section, which is your Alt, your Space, your Shift, and your Control. These buttons come in super useful a little bit later on, but let's get into the generic overview of what the tools do right off the bat. So the general tools, pretty straightforward. You've got your knob, your big central knob. <laughs> You've got the knob right in the middle of the unit. That's probably the item that I use the most and I figure anyone who's using it is gonna benefit from that the most. It's kind of where your fingers stay centrally placed. The primary function of this is to increase and decrease brush size, regardless of what tool you're using. Um, you know, whether it be the eraser, the brush, clone stamp, etc. You can increase and decrease the size of that tool just by rotating the knob. Very straightforward. To the lower left of the knob, you've got your dial. That's initially programmed to be the arrow keys control, so if you use the arrow keys, it's just a simple way. Above that, you've got your scroll wheel, which, without any other buttons, is simply for zooming in and out. And if you press the scroll wheel, it fits the screen. A quick reset if you're moving around your work a lot. Very nice, very useful. I actually use it quite a bit. Now that it's like simpler to zoom in and out and it's a quicker feature, I zoom in and out of my work a lot more and I find that it definitely helps. That's basically it for the scroll section, as they call it, and so let's move on to the kit section. It's the D-pad on the actual unit itself. By default, the up arrow is the eraser tool, the right arrow is the brush tool, the down arrow is the stamp tool, and the left arrow is the healing tools. Pretty straightforward and there are more tools once we get a little bit further into the advanced section of the guide. We'll get to that later. Hold your horses, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not done explaining the basic stuff yet. The last section is the Prime 4 section. Alt, Space, Control, and Shift. These serve as the keyboard buttons do on the computer normally, but also they come in handy for the more advanced features, which we'll talk about right now. By using these four, these Prime 4 buttons, in tandem with the other features on the actual tour box, you get access to the whole gamut of tools in Photoshop, Lightroom, whatever program it may be. These combinations are really what make the product elevate your workflow. They make this thing way more useful because admittedly there is a bit of a learning curve. You have to remember all the button combinations, but honestly, don't even doubt your muscle memory because once you start learning them, like you don't even think about it. You're just 
drawing away or editing away and boom, you're just pressing buttons and all of a sudden your workflow is like crazy fast. It's unreal. And since I alluded to the advanced section of it, let's get into the advanced features of this actual unit. In the toolbox guide at the bottom right corner, you'll see the general controls and then right beside it, the advanced controls divided up by the three sections. So in the first rotating section, you've got your advanced controls. Now, if you look at the guide, you can see exactly what each one is gonna do. So for example, holding your tall button and your scroll wheel, you can cycle between the layers that you're working on instead of you know dragging your mouse over, clicking the certain layer, going back to what you were doing, you just quickly cycle through layers and you can make changes that way. You even got other features like changing blending modes and stuff like that. This is the one feature that I find the most helpful, especially when I'm retouching portraits, using these buttons in tandem with the main knob. You can do things like increase and decrease brush size without touching anything, but then when you start pressing buttons and twisting that knob, that's when it gets real interesting. For example, pressing the tall button and rotating the knob will increase and decrease the opacity of your brush. Just by pressing that button, you can toggle between the size and the opacity, which when you're editing skin tones or stuff like that, can be very, very time saving instead of having to go up, type in the opacity of the brush that you want, go back down, adjust it, go back up, and you know what I mean. It just, it adds up. You can increase and decrease the brush hardness, which again, you want those soft edges. Sometimes you need a real hard edge to just paint in a hard line very quick. You can do that by pressing the short button in tandem with the actual knob turning itself. You have the top button and your side buttons too as well that allow you to change the brush flow and you even have an open slot to adjust something or set a custom parameter that you want to use. Moving on to the kit section. The kit section, as I mentioned, is the D-pad on the controller, as well as the two buttons that I didn't talk about earlier, C1 and C2 as they label it. These come unset. You know, sometimes you make mistakes, so I set these two buttons to be undo and redo, so that I don't have to take my hand off the console, go to the keyboard, command Z, oh, command shift Z to redo something. It's just two button clicks, boom, boom. You can go back and forth even to see if the changes that you made, if you like them. Very quick, that's a personal programming preference that I had. Ooh personal programming preference. I can't believe I said that without making a mistake. Again, in tandem with like the side buttons and the top buttons, it gives you access to a whole bunch of other tools that you would normally use when editing in, let's say Photoshop. For example, the marquee tool, the lasso tool, the quick selection, magic wand tool, um, using your crop, fill, feather, you can invert uh, a layer, you can use your free transform tool, all by pressing up, down, left, right, in tandem with another button on the console. You can even pre-program or customize all the buttons you wanna use later on in the Toolbox console. And the final section, the Prime 4 section, what they did here is, you know, these tools actually help you with the other sections. So they added a cool little feature that if you double tap any of these buttons, it also has a secondary uh, function. For example, your side button is the command button on your Mac, but if you double tap it, it becomes escape. The tall button, if you hold it down, it's alt. So if you're using the brush tool and you want to sample colors, you just hold it down, alt works like that. But if you double tap it, it acts as your foreground, background color switch. So you can alt, eyedropper a color, double tap it, switch to your background, eyedropper another color, and then you can just keep rotating quickly between the two colors instead of having to get off your project, change those colors, swap them back, and you know, it's just, just making you quicker, that's all. And again, if you guys use the product and you're new to it, yeah, it's gonna take a little bit of time to remember all these shortcuts, but that's why the Toolbox console and the Toolbox guide are so awesome. With just the press of a button, which is right under the knob, this little crescent moon-shaped button, you can open up the guide and you can get a refresher as to what each combo does. And the cool thing is too, if you open up the guide and press the button that you're trying to learn about, it actually highlights all the features of that specific button. So that's another cool option. And now that you guys kind of have the gist of what this thing can do and all the buttons and features on it, let's jump into Photoshop and you know, let's edit a portrait and actually put this thing to the test. All right, so we got Photoshop open. We got a picture of my buddy Anthony, who you may recognize from older videos. Here's a picture from our Alberta trip, which you'll see more about in a bit. It's just a regular portrait. You know, I'm gonna use the tour box to get in there and just do some of the touch-ups that I normally do. Duplicate the layer, we've got our brush tool selected and because of the functionality of the tour box, I can change the opacity and the flow and the size of the brush very quickly. So right now, We've got 100% opacity on the brush. I'm gonna hold down the long button and twist the dial, bring that down to about 10%. And then I'm just gonna, again, hold that long button down to sample parts of his skin that I want to brush in. Just lightening up the darker areas a little here. 
it's the some, same stuff that I talked about when we did the portrait retouching tutorial. Very basic stuff, just made easier by the tour box. Um, I noticed that Anthony didn't shave the top of his beard on this particular day, so we're gonna use our scroll wheel to zoom in, and then the left arrow on the tour box selects our healing brush, so we're just gonna select some of those little loose hairs, and we're just gonna shave them away, boom. You don't need to shave, Anth, I got you covered, buddy. So now we've got that done. We can use our scroll wheel to zoom out. And let's just see the difference there. Yeah, brightened up his eyes a little bit. But like I said in the older video about portrait retouching, it's sort of flattened it out. So we're gonna select our dodge and burn tool. Same principles apply to the brush. You can scale it up, scale it down. By holding the long button, you can adjust the exposure, how, how uh, strong the brush is. We're gonna zoom back into his face here and we're just gonna add a little bit more shape back into the face. Obviously holding the long button to darken and releasing it to lighten areas. So we're just gonna lighten up his cheeks a little. Just, just adding a little bit more shape back to the photo. Darken that, and the eyes a bit. Lighten up the lips, darken it up a little bit there. Let's see what we've got. Beautiful. For the sake of the video, I'm happy with that. Let's just do one more thing and show you a little example. So you can see here, I've added a gradient to the top because I want to darken that area or create a little bit more contrast in the clouds. Right now, that layer is set to normal using the tour box by holding the side button and the scroll wheel, you can change that layer blend mode. So as you can see here, it's changing through. I'm going to go with soft light. It adds a little bit of color and a little bit more contrast, but it doesn't push it too far. So I'm happy with that. Just a quick example of how the tour box can speed up your workflow. Something like that wouldn't take me too, too long, but if I have to go back and forth between the keys and just the fact that I can scroll to zoom in and out and scroll to change the brush size, those are little things that make a big difference. If you guys liked the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let me know down below what you think of the actual product itself. Is it something you could see yourself using? Is it something that you might want to pick up in the future? If it is, I will leave the link down below. You guys can go check it out. Remember, I'm not being paid to say any of this. I'm just telling you guys because I enjoy the product. Hopefully you guys do too. And who knows what you guys can do in the future with one of these. Come to think of it, I wonder how future Daniel would be using this technology. Hmm. Yeah.